Hey all, uh, why don't we go through uh, Spanish Castle Magic. <laughs> tune down a half a step. Like, uh, I think all Hendrix is tuned down a half a step. A uh, good tune. Another one of those ones that uh, was a, a live favorite. And, uh, you know, you do all kinds of jamming in it. But the, the, <laughs> the studio one is, is fairly straightforward. Um, it starts, uh, well, first off, you tune half a step down, like I said. <laughs> And it starts off with um, he, he would do that like on the live one, I, he would just do it, I don't know if he nodded them in, but it seemed like it would stay on. Before he actually got into it. But you're up here at, up here at a, uh, E, at the... Ninth fret, D, G, and B. Uh, a at 11. Doesn't matter if you do it. Or doesn't matter how you strum it, really. If you want to get into like the other stuff that he does, just bend up the G at 11 with the B at 12. Goes into that lick. Low E. A, 4, 2. Back to 4. B and E open. Goes in. So it starts on B with that. It's very far away. Down to B flat. These are five chords. A and then A flat. It hits that one at the end of it. So it's. And the wind is just right. So it, it hits that. Uh, that's a, a sharp nine chord on. Uh, just like the, the typical Hendrix chord up here at E7 sharp nine. Drag it down here to the fourth fret. And that starts over again. It's all in your mind. Hang on, my darling. So after that last So that's hang on, my darling. So, uh, so you want to do uh, D, G, B at the second, and then the D string four, two, back to four, and then you can hit the B and E open. You can hit. You can hit B at five. Back to that E. Again, B and E open. Now for the the part that goes. He doesn't really play the chords on there, so he'll do. So he kind of plays around. Uh, it does a little. He does little fills there instead of the bass does that. But he's just. You 
can do D bent up at four. Those little licks that you would do two four on the D string, the A string, you could even do them on the low E. back into Spanish and then another verse B B flat A A flat then that C sharp 9 thing Except, uh, you know, he does solos. The, the, the thing, uh, jamming was the big thing then, uh, when Hendrix was, was performing live. Uh, jamming is great, not, not really my favorite thing, but it's great. <laughs> uh, but, but the thing is, it becomes a little formulaic after a while. Uh, so, like, if you watch or listen to Hendrix live stuff from then, which is all, don't get me wrong, Hendrix is on another planet from other guitar players. He's far and away the greatest rock player ever and ever will be. That's my opinion. No one will come close. Uh, so uh, to, to sort of criticize him is absurd because he literally could do no wrong. However, um, you know, every Hendrix tune, if you'll, if you'll listen to bootlegs, they all start out rock, then they wind down to where it's almost barely even playing. It slows down. And, it gets very quiet and then builds back up again and they'll probably throw in a drum solo, maybe more than one, you know. So, uh, it, every tune kind of fell into that. I don't know, every tune, but a lot of them did. And this is one of those. So it would go on and then it would quiet down and then it would get back, build up again. You have all that dynamic stuff going on. All great, don't get me wrong. Just not my kind of uh, playing. So, this is one of those songs that lends itself to that. If you want to do that kind of jamming and just see where it goes, uh, this is one where you can, where you can do that. It's, not a, it's kind of intended for that. Uh, but that, that's really the whole, uh, the whole tune. The rest is just, uh, you know, I'm not really going to get into the soloing parts of it, but it would be... Uh, a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, good luck.